Water is the basis of life. Environmental and societal systems depend on it to function. As humans, we need water for drinking and cleaning, for irrigation to ensure crop production, and also to fulfill industry demands. However, population growth, industrialization, urbanization, and climate change have led to a depletion of both surface and groundwater resources, as well as to a deterioration of their quality. Due to these pressures, the sustainable management of water resources represents an important challenge for society in general. Sustainable management should maximize economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising vital ecosystems. In order to do so, data and information are needed on the different variables of the water cycle. To implement this approach, river basins are a suitable management entity as natural geographical and hydrological units integrating processes occurring upstream. CAPWATER is a project which aims at developing capacities in the field of water resource assessment with a special focus on monitoring, data management, and modeling. Monitoring is a paramount activity in environmental sciences, providing necessary data on system behavior over time and space related to specified management objectives. Monitoring is also practiced to gain a deeper understanding of natural and anthropogenic processes. In the context of river basin management, water resource monitoring includes the measurement of hydroclimatic variables necessary to understand the water cycle and the quality of water resources. Collection of data should respond to specific goals in the management of water resources. For instance, relevant variables such as precipitation, temperature, stream flow, groundwater level, water quality, land use, soils, and topography are monitored to understand how water is generated, transported, and distributed in the basin. It is also important in order to understand how human systems consume and pollute water. In the case of precipitation, gauges or stations are used to measure the amount of rain or snowfall in a specific site and represent point source data. Usually, precipitation is measured in height, millimeters being a typical standard unit. By multiplying the height of precipitation by the area of influence, we can get the volume of water. Precipitation is one of the most important variables since it is the main input of water, but it is also one of the most difficult to measure due to its spatial heterogeneity. Together with precipitation, other meteorological variables such as temperature, wind speed, air humidity, and solar radiation are also typically monitored using sensors for each individual variable. These variables are important to understand local weather and climate, as well as to estimate, for example, evapotranspiration or wind potential. While managing a river basin, surface and groundwater availability are crucial variables. For instance, stream flow is measured at different locations in streams and rivers to assess the surface water availability within a basin. Measurements are conducted throughout the year to understand the temporal and seasonal variations of stream flow. Groundwater levels, on the other hand, are measured to quantify the amount of water stored in the saturated zone and also to understand processes such as recharge. Groundwater measurements are taken less frequently than surface water due to the naturally lower temporal variability. Water quality refers to the chemical, biological, and physical characteristics of water and is monitored by selecting parameters which can be measured either on location or in the laboratory. Typical water quality parameters include temperature, dissolved oxygen, 
electrical conductivity, pH, suspended and dissolved solids, biochemical and chemical oxygen demand, nutrients, metals, and others which give an idea about the health of the system. By measuring water quality, we can understand the natural influence of soils and geology, but we can also assess the impact of human activities on water resources. For instance, agriculture, untreated sewage, and industrial wastewater are known pollution sources which have been deteriorating water resources worldwide. Remote sensing is arising as an efficient technology to monitor river basins using satellite imagery and, more recently, drones. One of the main advantages of this technology is that it provides data for basins where no other source is available, so-called ungaged basins. And remotely sensed data has the advantage of providing seamless spatial coverage, which point measurement cannot. Typical remote sensing products include land use and vegetation, topography and key hydrological variables such as precipitation and evapotranspiration, water temperature or sediment content. However, this information has to be verified on location, a term known as ground truthing. While planning monitoring activities, four main questions need to be answered. When? do we need to measure? Where should we measure? What parameters should be selected? Which measurement techniques should be used? Monitoring river basins creates a large amount of data which has to be stored and made available for further analysis. Nowadays, typical stations have data loggers where the measurements are stored but they can also be sent via GSM or Internet to central servers or databases. Once the data has been properly stored, it needs to be transformed into relevant information to avoid the so-called data-rich but information-poor syndrome described by Robert C. Ward. Data is transformed into information by means of statistical methods, visualization techniques, and reporting results. For instance, typical statistical analyses include the identification of mean, median, maximum and minimum values as well as variability and skewness of the data. It is important as well to identify outliers which can be a consequence of measurement errors or extreme events. Statistics are also fundamental to describe uncertainty and define confidence intervals. Measuring over long periods of time is a logistic challenge since stations may face problems such as battery shortage, vandalism, extreme weather conditions and many others. These problems generate gaps in the time series which can be filled using statistical correlations with and regressions from the data from other stations nearby. Long-term time series are used to identify trends or changes like precipitation decreases or increases in pollution concentration. Statistical methods are also necessary to ensure good quality of the data, applying homogeneity analysis or proofing the randomness of data with an autocorrelation function. Visualization is useful to summarize measured data, but also to illustrate important concepts when presenting the results to a wider public. Typical graphical analysis includes histograms to represent the distribution of the data, box plots to indicate variability using quantiles, probability plots to compare two different data sets, and scatter plots to evaluate the linearity of measured variables. Graphs and figures can be used by decision makers to identify problems, challenges, or areas where action is needed. Statistical analyses and visualization results should then be reported in order to have concise documents describing and explaining the status of the river basin. This information is important to develop river basin management plans 
Comparing indices or statistics based on measured data with threshold or target values is a typical use of such monitoring reports. After the measured data has been analyzed, verified, and properly understood, it can be used to feed environmental and socio-hydrological models, which are valuable management tools. Such models establish a relation between variables of interest to simulate, predict, or estimate processes occurring in the basin. Models can be classified according to the process or variable they simulate. For example, hydrology, flood risk, groundwater, water quality, irrigation demand, water allocation, urban water management, or reservoir operation. Hydrological models, mainly rainfall runoff models, usually establish a relationship between the amount of precipitation and the stream flow of a river. Stream flow prediction is relevant for water supply, either urban or agricultural, for flood or drought risk assessment, but also to establish the environmental flow which is required by ecosystems to function properly. Key components of hydrological models include the interface between atmosphere and land, giving rise to infiltration, runoff, and evapotranspiration, which are described mathematically. Such processes can be represented based on physical equations, statistically or empirically. Furthermore, the routing of water flowing through the river basin can be described differently by the various models, depending on the equations applied. The movement of water in channels or pipelines is described by so-called hydrodynamic models. Floods are among the most common environmental hazards worldwide. Their main negative impacts are loss of lives, damage to property, and destruction of crops and infrastructure. Their frequency, magnitude, and impact have increased during the last decades, and they will be intensified by climate change. Therefore, flood risk assessment models specialize in the simulation and prediction of the timing, magnitude, and areas of flood risk. They are typically based on hydrological models and describe the routing of the flood peak, often described as discharge during a flood event, and the interaction with the flood plain, identifying the water level at a given location and time, and quantifying areas which will be inundated. The main purpose of these models is to understand how floods function in order to prevent and mitigate their negative impacts by reacting before the hazard occurs. For instance, early warning systems aim at reducing flood risk. Groundwater is an important resource and in some regions it is the main source for water supply. Therefore, understanding its behavior, its interactions with surface water and processes such as recharge and base flow is crucial to foster its sustainable management. Groundwater models aim at simulating and predicting the conditions of aquifers, which often do not coincide with river basin limits. For instance, groundwater models can predict the effect of hydrological processes, abstraction, irrigation, dam construction, or climate change on groundwater levels. Modeling groundwater systems is based on Darcy's Law, which describes the movement of water in a saturated medium from an area of high potential or pressure to zones with a lower potential. Some models may also include chemical aspects of groundwater. Human activities deteriorate the quality of water resources. Poor water quality has negative impacts on humans and the environment, risk to human health, impairment of economic activities and ecological services, as well as a loss of biodiversity. Water quality models try to understand the interaction of water and substances as determined by natural and anthropogenic processes of the water cycle. Typical water quality models 
simulate parameters such as temperature, suspended solids, related to erosion, nutrients, related to fertilizers and wastewater, dissolved oxygen, relevant for aquatic ecosystems, among others. They are typically coupled with a water quality model describing the transport of the solvent water and subsequently quantify the additions, losses, and conversions of substances while water is moving through the different compartments of the system. Crop production is the main livelihood of millions of farmers around the world and the basis for global food security. Agriculture remains the main water user worldwide using almost 70%. Irrigation projects have been implemented for centuries to guarantee water supply, increase crop yields and thus ensure food security. Managing these systems properly is of utmost importance to efficiently use the water, reduce losses and increase productivity. Irrigation models aim at quantifying water requirements of specific crops under given irrigation methods, soil and climate conditions. Other models describe the response of yields to the amount of irrigation water applied, and still others simulate the distribution and allocation of water within the irrigation system. A river basin has several consumptive uses such as irrigation, urban and rural demands and industry, or non-consumptive uses such as navigation and hydropower generation. Conflicts arise when stakeholders have a different position on how water resources should be allocated. Therefore, allocation models aim at optimizing this process to maximize the gains and welfare of the whole system under the consideration of environmental needs. In general, models can be seen as management tools which should support the decision-making process to maximize benefits, minimize negative impacts, and try to achieve a sustainable management of water resources. In order to do so, a more integrative approach looking at the whole chain from observation to decision at river basin level is required. Cap water aims at contributing to this with knowledge and know-how on monitoring, data management and modeling as three essential instruments necessary to generate useful information for an improved understanding and management of complex water resource systems.